Well, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tiana Tuliono. Yeah, it, uh, it's a bit of, bit of a marathon. Um, we perhaps best <coughs> know you as being in the activist space. Yes. Uh, and whilst it's not unusual, um, well, not in the Green going, Party, flipping to the other side, and you were in the mayoral election, yeah. uh, now you're, you're <coughs> jumping into the political space. What's tempted you into this side of things instead of the activism? Um, well, I'm not the first activist to try to get into Parliament, and um, we've had them in the Greens since since back in the day. Um, <coughs> so, you know, Sue Bradford was in there, and Andrew Tanscross, Rod Donald. <coughs> when I was at university, one of my lecturers was Jeanette Fitzsimons as well. And after she actually left Parliament, um, the last time I saw her, we were actually uh, uh, we were, we were uh, um, protesting outside the oil summit. So she left Parliament to become an activist, so it's actually part of the, the DNA of the Greens. Um, why haven't Sorry. you been swarbricked? Why haven't I been swarbricked? Because, uh, again, as, as I mentioned to one of the other candidates, there's a perception the doors have been flung open a bit. There's a, a chance for... A, you're, you're a well-known face. You, you, you stand a chance. Am I? Thank you. Um, probably... Like, what, one, of the, one of the things about Palmerston North is like, I, get, I get rung up to do... TV interviews and all that kind of stuff, but there, all the all the TV studios are in, in Auckland or Wellington. You know, I just can't get up and walk down the road to them, <clears throat> particularly during COVID when we were stuck in our lounges and stuff like that. But you're, so, uh, my, my, so there is that there is the lack of access to actually getting getting out there and, and the platform and so on. My point is, you're not you're, you've said yourself, I'm not campaigning necessarily for the electorate seat. Oh uh, yeah, yes. I want your party vote. Yeah, yes, and yes. yet you could have a green electorate MP potentially if you fought hard enough. Um, well, the. <laughs> Uh, the, the Green Party uh, primarily focuses on the party vote. So if people want to give me their candidate vote, that's fine as well. Uh, one, of, one of the things that I'm mindful of is that in the latest Colmar Brunton poll, we are on the trajectory around about 6%. I'm number eight on the list, so I'm the highest ranked candidate outside of Parliament. On 6%, I get in. So like for me, it's, it's maths. You know, Palmerston North is better served with two people as opposed to one people, one person. So if people want to have an extra voice, another pro a progressive voice, uh, standing up for Te Tiriti or Waitangi, standing up for social justice issues and, of course, the environment, then they might want to think about party voting green. Does that not give the perception, though, that you are disinterested in electorate issues if you just want to campaign on the party list and deal with national issues? Um, well, I'm, I feel like I'm firmly embedded in the community. I mean, you can see that with my work around with the, with the Māori Wards campaign. I'm married with four kids. All of my kids uh, went to school here. Tangi was actually my oldest daughter's history teacher. Um, <laughs> Um, and so, and, yeah, and three of my kids are at the Kurukopapa on Grey Street. So I am. What grade did she get? And what, what is it a reflection <laughs> of your daughter or Tony? She's graduating from university, so good job, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Um, the Greens have faced criticism in this term for sort of over compromising on their values as part of uh, as being being in, in government. Are there rooms for such ideals when we're dealing with MMP, knowing that you're going to have to compromise? You sort of over-promise and under-deliver. Yeah, well, my, my theory of change is that you've got to try to be active in all the different spaces. So I've got a background in Indigenous rights and the environment. So I'm a, I'm a lawyer by training. So I've worked at the United Nations and, and that kind of stuff. So there are opportunities to make progressive change there. Um, but also there's also opportunities in, in the NGO space as well. So previously in another incarnation I was on the board of Greenpeace and that was also true of Parliament as well. Um, so I think there is space to make progressive gains like in this, as a part of the COVID reset we did get 1.3 billion jobs, jobs for nature. I, I understand there's about 14 million of those jobs have gone to Horizon, probably a whole lot more. So those are actual real real outcomes. So I think there is there is actually we have been doing good things and there are opportunities in there to move forward in terms of progressive But And values. Jimmy might want to fact check me on this one, but that you were previously opposed to the Levinto Otaki route and have, have, have sort of, you've, you've, you've compromised on that one and allowed it to go through. 
Um, well, you know, uh, Parliament is a place where you have to prioritise and to compromise as well. But look, here's the thing, we, we are not prioritising roads. What, what I'm mindful of is that as we get through the COVID crisis, we've got the climate crisis, we've got the biodiversity crisis and the deepening crisis of poverty. Earlier this year, Australia bushfires, they're on fire. Last year, the Arctic was on fire and also the Amazon. So we do what we have to do, but the thing is, in order to actually move forward and to think ahead, we've actually got to get that sweet spot and try to target all the different things that are coming down the lane. Um, if Labour has enough to govern alone, will the Greens be out of that, or do you think there will still be coalition talks? Um, well, that's a... That's and will you have to compromise even more because they don't need you so much? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that, well, that's, you know, ultimately it's up to the voters once that happens. Uh, but, the, but the thing is, um, uh, like that, that's actually not a decision for me. It's what uh, the party makes that decision. So whatever the numbers end but up being... what do being, you think? What do I think? Um, it really depends on leverage, right? So it depends on how many, how many folks that we have, how many folks that they have, how many folks everybody else here has, and what we can do to actually push through our policy positions. So, so for me, it's, it, it really depends on how the cards will fall on October the 17th, October the 18th. But uh, I guess my ultimate point is, do you think you will be an MP in government or you'll just be an MP in the House and potentially opposition, I suppose, is the only other option? Um, the, but there are other options as well. There's confidence and supply agreements. We've True. had that before as well. Um, so you can come to, a, come to an agreement and say, hey, look, these are, the, these are the, some of the sorts of priorities that, they, that we want to push forward. Um, you know, if they get a, if Labour gets a slim majority, they might want to have that to have a working relationship with us, and I think that would be very important uh, for them and for us as well. Um, and so, yeah, it, get the crystal ball out, man. Let's check out and see where the <laughs> see where the numbers fall. Uh, very quickly, if you could, just in 2017, the Green Party were pushing for passenger trains through the gorge, yep, uh, yep. particularly, particularly uh, potentially useful for easing, tra for easing travel on the saddle at the moment. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Kind of a yes or no, really. But is that something you would continue to push? Yeah, yeah. I think um, I, I think it's a it's a it's a good idea. Getting more rail happening, getting more um, getting more cars and trucks off the roads as well. I mean, it's better conditions for the roads and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, anything quickly? Uh, it's just a quick one. Someone asks if you worked for the UN, and if so, what you did. Uh, yes, so I, I worked at the United Nations for a bit. I, I lived in Paris for a few years, so I was based at, the, um, at UNESCO working on indigenous knowledge and small islands um, issues. Um, but I also worked with different NGOs, so I've been... I've worked all around the world. I've worked in South, South America, um, Africa. Around about 20 years ago, I was actually working in Africa with a group out of Soweto. Um, so I do, I do have that, I, I do have that in, my, in my background. But I actually, right now, I'm working in um, education. So I do education, uh, education publishing and also bits and pieces of policy and stuff. Quick fire round, cannabis legalisation and control? Yes. Uh, end of life choice? Yeah, I'm leaning on no. And we know you can speak to rail. Uh, you can demonstrate if you wish, but can you also, do, can you demonstrate any sign language? Um, no, I, I did a sign language course when I was 14. Um, yeah, but I just can't remember. I can, I can remember some things, that, uh, a, a little bit, a, a few things, but I'm not fluent. I wouldn't, yeah. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Tiana Tumiono. Kia ora, Tiana